and hello i am mike zorch and this is a new video series called zorch reacts i'm going to be doing some reaction videos to different gaming videos out there and today's first video is uh one from joe cat joe cat has been doing these hilarious crap guide videos he's done a series of them on dnd &D. And those are great, but he's just done three for Final Fantasy XIV. One on tanks, one on healers, and one on DPS. And I'm going to do a reaction video to his tank trailer and comment on some things. Because he calls it a crap guide, but it's actually fairly good advice. Now, I don't play a tank in fourteen on Momo my Lollafell, I've basically been a healer full-time and on my archer or my bard full-time um Hinata, which is all raw uh I've been DPS that entire time and I've got some other characters where I've played black mage and things like that but I've been a healer full-time but I've never I've never been a tank never played a tank I've unlocked the class for for tanking but I I've, I've done it a little bit against Tasha but I've never done it in full-time so I've been a full-time DPS and I've been a full-time healer so I don't know that much about being a tank but as a healer you have to know a little bit and because well it's your job to the tank alive and you have to know you know is this tank using his abilities to mitigate damage because I've been in some dungeons where I've been in a few dungeons where it's harder to keep a tank alive for some reason but they're taking way more damage than they should be so let's get into this What up, Warriors of Fartness? I bet you don't have the slightest clue how to play this eyeball-melting anime game. Oh, sure, you probably know that you can beat up enemies by clicking on them until they die, but do you know how to find a static in your FC to help you prog uwu? I bet you don't even know what- I know exactly what all those mean. What any of those words mean, so sit down, shut up, and eat your gizzle greens, because I'm gonna teach you what thee mayhap not knoweth, thy noobliness. Welcome to a crap guide to Final Fantasy. <laughs> I love- I love the kazoo song. The kazoo music. The tank is the person in the front lines of every group, leading the charge to inevitable party wipes, which is because you are the most important person in the party, having slap fights with the boss since everybody else is way too squishy to handle the puss pounding. Second only to the healer. The healer's important too. Patty cake. You'll never see Jimmy's soft boots eyeing up the cloud of darkness with no. his two by four and scriggly tree branch. But how hard can tanking be? Turn on your tank stance, do your one, two, three combo, and blame the healers when you die, right? That sounds like somebody who needs their short Q privileges revoked. Firstly, yeah, tank play. stance. You turn this on to start gaining enmity. What's enmity? It's where you shout at the bad guys, hey, hit me! They'll be paying attention to you so long as you're dealing damage. So you better be dealing damage and not just having a staring contest. If you don't, then they're gonna start indiscriminately charging at the rest of the party like a dog uh -huh. in a movie theater. If you are the designated main tank or in light parties, the only tank make sure this is on if there is another tank in the party and you are the off tank make thing is you can see those in the game in the party list you can see when someone has an, uh, has a uh a status effect either good negative or or good status a buff or or a status effect you can see that healers need to see those and a lot of times I have not seen tanks with their stances up. And they take a lot of damage. Also, he's getting to the next part. Make sure this is off, unless there's some other bad guys you gotta pull. If you have conflicting stances with the other tank, they will chuck their shoulder pads at you. As a tank, you should make sure the bad guy's ass is facing the party as often as possible, mm -hmm. as indicated by the bright, glowing, half-eaten donut underneath the target. This is so that if the bad guy sneezes, you're the only one getting down with the sickness. And also, if your party has anyone playing any jobs that particularly likes to clap them cheeks- That's not as necessary anymore. Um, most jobs have abilities now where you can completely ignore your positionals. Like, uh, Tigra plays 
um, Lancer. He plays Dragoon. And they have an ability that it's in its true north. And it lets them ignore positionals. So it's not as true anymore since he did this. But um, since he made this video. It's been like seven months ago. But there are still some things that need, you need to be in the right position to be able to do the right kinds of damage or to maximize the use of your abilities. So you've provided a bright, shiny spanking space. On top of this, as a tank, you are, by Heidelin's blessings, horrible at dancing, which is why you should uh -huh. move as little as possible once you've got the enemy's attention. That as when Gold talked about that, he, draw he did tank, and he was not used to standing still, because in WoW, he moved all over the frickin' place. But in Final Fantasy XIV, the tank's job is to hold the mob, hold the boss in one spot so that uh, everybody can just beat the crap out of it. Because some characters require positionals. It's not as necessary anymore these days, but it's best to keep the boss or a, or a large mob from moving around too much. Uh, because the party has to dodge AoEs and and other effects coming from the boss. And that makes it harder, especially with mechanics, especially with complex mechanics. It makes it harder for the players. So you have to keep them steady. That way the party can continue to whap the wumpus without having to chase down the bad guy's glorious booty. Just as well, because you have control of where the baddies are, you control how useful everybody else is. So if somebody puts down a useful AoE, stop fucking oh. running away from it! Now yes. that you have the baddies' attention and are in a nice, cozy, poking position, you don't have to worry about anything else, right? Ah, that's what I thought you'd say, you dumb fucking horse! So even or not, when you die, it's not entirely the healer's fault, just mostly their fault. That little mm -hmm. bit of responsibility you have is based on how well you can juggle mitigation. What's mitigation? It's the buttons that make the bad guy's slaps hurt less that you sometimes press once a subscription and never think about. About again. You ever wonder why you have several of those buttons that so all seem like they do the same thing? Well, that's because you're supposed to space them out over the course of a fight so the healers don't have to sacrifice their entire mana pool and firstborn child to get your yeah, frail ass I through the dungeon. Relate. Remember not to bust your tanking load all at once or else you're gonna feel a lot of shame when you're all out of juice and the boss still wants to go about four more rounds. Every tank also has a press <laughs> yes. X to not die button that can be used to survive any devastating attacks or if you're a really aggressive paladin who drew every enemy in a dungeon ever and don't want the healer to hire a hitman on you. As for what your limit break does, tanks are thicker than the average Disney mom to the point your honky <laughs> Chonky Donkey Bahonky extends to the rest of the party, protecting them from damage up to a whopping 80% at LB3. The thing mm -hmm. is, unless you're a high-end player, you'll probably be using tank LB as frequently as a good player rolls high on loot. Overall, you have four oh, flavors to choose God, from. Yes. Punk, Grunge, Metal, and Christian Rock. <laughs> Gold Warrior for big axes, big anger, big self-healing, and if you like to do fell cleaves, again and again and again and again. If you prefer more brooding than crooding, the Dark Knight is great for doing your best guts impression. You get a huge-ass <laughs> sword, goopy black energy particle effects, and the literal best mitigation in the entire game, but it's mm -hmm. balanced because they get the worst invulnerability button in the entire game. You press yep. it and then it makes you die. Gunbreaker is called attack, oh, but everybody I've knows it's- I've seen that. I've seen that plenty of times as main healer. Oh, I, I've seen that plenty of times. Eh, uh, you, you panic. Or early on I did. Just three DPS in a trench coat as designated by the fact you get a fucking gun and your swings explode. But you have to be a hardcore gamer since it requires a lot of cartridges. And finally the paladin who tries to pretend they're a healer and caster but only when the other healers and casters are looking. But fuck all that because the most important thing is that you get the motherfucking sword and shield baby! Try getting behind this wall of holiness bitch! Now you know how to play tank, you're welcome. <laughs> okay. As I said, I haven't played tank. So I have no idea how tanks work, really. But as a healer, as I said, you need to know if tanks is putting up their putting up their mitigation. And I've run into a lot of cases where the tanks weren't, and I was just constantly having to keep a tank alive. Worst thing also is when they start when they get impatient. And this is a problem in Final Fantasy XIV where the tank will just run ahead, you just run off, leave everybody behind, and just start pulling everything in the freaking dungeon. It'll just pull a mass of creatures just to get through the dungeon faster. And it makes life for a healer harder. And it makes it harder because we can only cast so fast. You know, sure, we get we get some instant cast abilities. We get some abilities that um, don't need 
NP. Well, when I get to the uh, the crap guide for healers, I'll elaborate on that. But this was this was good. This is actually this is not crap. This is actually good advice. This was actually very good advice. I don't see why he calls it crap. It is great advice, and and uh, more people should be watching these because they definitely need them, especially a lot of the WoW players. Because uh, there's been so many new people coming into Final Fantasy XIV that. The game has a key login queue 24 7. That never happens. For the first time ever, this game has a login queue almost 24 7. Now, Tiger said yesterday about 4 a.m. he was able to log in without a queue. That's a rarity now. And in a couple of days, uh, we're going to find out whether or not Square Enix is ready because Endwalker is dropping. And about 30-40% of the WoW community, maybe a little bit more than that, have jumped ship and have come over to Final Fantasy XIV. And we're going to see whether or not they're ready because of the whole shit going on with the um, silicon shortage. They haven't been able to get server new servers online, or they've been struggling to get them online. I know that they want to bring servers online for Australia, the Oceania servers, and they haven't been able to because of all the uh, COOF restrictions going on. Anyway, this has been Joe Cat's a Crap Guide to Final Fantasy Tanks. My reaction to the video. And it, it, it gets funnier from there. And I have to say, it's not crap. It's good advice. Follow it. I've been Mike Desorch. Thanks for watching.